Hey Adventures, so today is going to be another book review. This is going to be for The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie. So this is a mystery or a murder mystery. Um, it's another one of the, it's actually the first book in the, chronologically in the Poirot series. Let's see, so The Mysterious Affair at Styles is the first of the Agatha Christie Poirot novels. And um, here comes my unpopular opinions. <laughs> I don't like them. Uh, I don't think, like, they're fine but I don't think that there's really anything special. And I will talk a little bit more about that in a second here. Before I get into this though, if for some reason after what I just said, you're still liking what you're saying from an air date adventure, we'd really appreciate it if you would like, comment, and subscribe. So I read this book because I wanted to listen to an audiobook narrated by Richard Armitage. And to no one's surprise, he was a fantastic narrator. Uh, the highlight of this book by far was his narration. But this story just really didn't do it for me. So this is the third Poirot novel, the third Christie novel that I have read. The first one was Murder on the Orient Express and the second one was Death on the Nile and so I've read two others in this Poirot series by Agatha Christie and none of them I have particularly loved. I really actually, I really like the recent, or not that recent anymore, it's several years old now, uh, Kenneth Branagh Murder on the Orient Express movie. I think that was a fantastic movie. I didn't like <laughs> oh, that's, that's, yeah. I didn't care for the Death on the Nile movie. I thought that the book, the Death on the Nile book was better than the Death on the Nile movie. And I thought that the Murder on the Orient Express book was better than the Death on the Nile book. And I thought that the Murder on the Orient Express movie was better than the Murder on the Orient Express book. And I feel like Mysterious Affair at Styles is probably better than Death on the Nile. But still not that great. Yeah, let's, let's, I don't know. Anyways, basically, it's, this is not my first exposure to Christie's Paro novels, but I also didn't really enjoy either of those other two novels that much. So, it's not really like there's anything technically wrong with these books. I just don't feel like they're as good or as well written as really everybody else seems to think. Paro is a decent character to follow, but his quirks just don't quite become fun enough to outweigh the rather bland storytelling in my opinion. I'm not invested in the character of Poirot and I'm not invested in the plots of the books so I can't get invested in the books as a whole. If we were to go through this story and break it down based using my five elements of story that I have talked about several times, being those five elements being characters, plot, themes, uh, world, or setting and then the uniqueness factor, I find that there's not a one of these that stands out to me in this story. As such, I have a hard time enjoying the books. That's really unfortunate because for me, story and characters or plot and characters are the two most important things in a story. Uh, themes are also important and as long as three of these five things are in, in existence, I can enjoy a book. Uh, well, as long as two of these things are in existence, three make, makes it a good book, four makes it a really good book, five makes it a, a really, really good book type thing. And none of them are here in the point to the point where I feel like they're really good books or even a good book. I, I feel like characters and plot are always going to be the most important to me, but I can get away if we only have good characters, but, but we have a really good setting and we have a really cool uniqueness factor. That's, that's great. I can still love that book. I can still really enjoy that book. If we only have plot, whatever it might be, if we have characters, plot, and themes, that's great. That's exactly the type of thing that I'm looking for. But we, if you want me to really enjoy a book, I need all three of these things, at least three of these five elements to be present. And unfortunately, none of them are, I mean, tech, yes, technically they all exist in this book, but none of them stand out in any way, shape, or form to the point where I can enjoy this book. That's kind of a lot longer and a lot more rambly than I want it to be, so it might, some of it might get cut, but anyways, I wish that I could talk more about the actual story of this book. But I recently read a different story, a, a different mystery book, a different murder mystery book, that I went into and thought, this reminds me of a lot of this Mysterious Affair at Styles book. Except that I came out of this book actually having enjoyed it, and feeling like there were some of those five elements that I just talked about that did stand out to me. So unfortunately, I don't really have a lot more to say with, with Murder on the, or with Mysterious Affair at Styles. I 
don't think that it was that great. <laughs> I have not yet completely given up on Christie. I'll try some of her other series for sure, or some of her other standalones maybe, but I can't really say that it's looking particularly good right now. If, if I can't find a hit in her books, I, I'll probably just stop reading her because it's not worth the time that I'm spending. I do want to, and I likely will continue to do so, keep reading the books that she has that are being adapted into the Kenneth Branagh movies. Uh, the most recent one was Halloween Party, had a was adapted into A Murder in Venice, maybe? So, I, I can't remember what it, exactly it's called. Haunting in Venice, that's what it was. It is the movie, and it's, I think, I think the Halloween party, or Halloween party is a collection of short stories or something like that, and so maybe I'll try that one out eventually and see if I like that, and then I'll watch the movie eventually as well. Because I do, in, for the most part, enjoy the movies. I didn't love Death on the Nile movie, but that's different conversation. Anyways, yeah, that's that's really all I have to say with this one. You guys don't have to agree with my opinions on these books, but that's, I, I just, I'm not loving them. I don't feel like my time is well used to be listening or reading these books. So anyways, that is my review for The Mysterious Affair at Siles, even though I didn't really talk that much about the book itself or the story itself. Anyways, thank you guys for watching an Aerodite Adventure. We are coming to the end of our posting lots of videos right now, and I'm not sure if we've ended it by this time or not, but we should have soon here. And thank you guys for watching, we'll see you guys again soon. Stay warm.